are just one week away from the NFL draft and we are taking a look at Evan's top 50 big board. We're going 10 players at a time. We've done the first three. We're now on to the fourth tier here. It is numbers 11 through 20. That would be good fits for the New England Patriots. All right, Evan, start us off with one offensive player from this range. So the 11 through 20 range certainly gets into guys that could be in play at 15 in the first round for the Patriots. And number 18 on the big board, Alabama quarterback Mac Jones, right? And I think that this is a little bit lower than some people were expecting as well for Mac Jones. But the reason why I have him down here is because this is a big board. This isn't about where I think he's actually going to end up in the draft. It's more about where I have him graded relative to the rest of the class. So this isn't a mock draft. It's a big board. So that's why he's down here. Quarterback value is going to put him up in the top 10 of the NFL draft. And the reasons why are because this is a very smart and cerebral football player. Somebody that right now now, as we currently speak, is at Alabama teaching Bill O'Brien the Alabama playbook because that's how much of a grasp he had of what the Alabama was doing there on the offensive side of the ball over the last couple of years. Someone that certainly makes really good decisions with the football and decides things oftentimes by pre-snap reads that makes him a really smart guy to get the ball out quickly, get the ball out on time, and just keep the train humming, right? Not somebody that's necessarily going to bring the, what Justin Fields or Trey Lance does or even Trevor Lawrence to the table in terms of athleticism or arm talent, but he's someone that just keeps it on schedule more times than not and does a really good job of understanding defensive structure and where his matchups and where his open receivers are going to be to get that ball out quickly and also has extremely good accuracy from the pocket and we know how much the Patriots are going to really take a lot of looks in terms of that so really the only question with Mac Jones is does he go to San Francisco at number three and he's out of the running for the Patriots if he doesn't go to the Niners the Niners end up taking Justin Fields or Trey Lance with a third overall pick in the draft I still think Mac Jones is a really great fit for New England for all the reasons that we said but what you're hoping for for him to maximize his value at the NFL level, you're basically assuming that he is going to master all the traits that he has from the pocket in a way that Tom Brady or Drew Brees or Peyton Manning, some of those quarterbacks did. That's a lofty expectation. So I don't think that we can go as far as saying Mac Jones is going to be one of those guys. More than likely, he's somebody in that Matt Ryan, if you're hopeful type of range, which is still a really, really good NFL quarterback. So if that's what you get, then I think you did pretty well. Yeah, it's it's certainly hard to gauge the futures of these young, all young players, but especially quarterbacks. It's, it's a very tough thing to do. So we'll see what happens. A lot there. of going to depend on their supporting cast and their coaching. Yep. Right? That, is, so, that is huge. So many of these guys that bust at the top of the draft, it's usually not because they're not talented enough to play quarterback in the NFL. It's most of the time it's because they don't have receivers, they don't have an offensive line, they don't have good coaching, and that's why they end up flaming out. Everybody that gets drafted in the top 10 of the NFL draft is a talented football player. It's really about how they're used and if the people around them allow them to be great. Yeah, much like what made them successful in college as well. So right. we'll see. Uh, how about one defensive player? How about Trey Flowers 2.0? Because that's what I think Quiddy Pay from Michigan is. He's somebody that a lot of teams are going to view. And again, he's 13 on the big board. A lot of people are going to view as a tweener, somebody that's a little bit undersized to play defensive end with the hand in the dirt, a little bit oversized to play outside linebacker. But I think the Patriots are not going to care about that. They didn't care with Trey Flowers, who had a very similar body type. They're going to allow Quiddy Pay, in my opinion, to play defensive end with his hand in the dirt and a three point stance and he is somebody that is very explosive off the ball uses his lack of length and his lack of height to his advantage to get underneath bigger offensive linemen and really is a very powerful rusher uses a good bull rush a good push pull method that, those types of things a lot like Trey Flowers used to do here in New England and he's somebody that can you can line up on passing situations over the center or over a guard or kick him inside in pass rush situations like they did with Trey Flowers as well similar body types similar playing style I think if the Patriots end up trading back or staying put at 15 and they want to go defense Quiddy Pay is a really effective defensive player that comes from a program in Michigan as we know that they've fallen in love with especially on the defensive side of the ball in the last couple of years so Quiddy Pay, Josh Uche, Chase Winovich all those guys could be reunited here in New England. 
That would be exciting for those Wolverines fans. Um, all right, so remember, you can see Evan's full list on our website, clnsmedia.com. Check it out.